Even if you want to drift like an amateur, here's a few things you need to know. Recently I went to Apple Valley Speedway in the high desert in California and just like every other millennial my age, I've always been infatuated in love with drifting since Tokyo Drift came out in 2008. What do you mean drift? And I will forever kick myself for not immediately looking into how to get started with my professional career of sending it sideways. I got to see a lot of guys on the track there that take this full time, they take it serious, and they take that punishment in the dirt if, the, if they wind up there. So that got me to thinking about what I would need on my road from amateur to Formula Drift, which now I am inspired to go see Formula Drift coming up soon this year because I got to see the ground floor of where this starts and ultimately I want to see where this goes. One of the coolest things about Drift that I think I realized was that we can all pretty much do this. You just got a little bit of a checklist in the way. Unlike traditional racing, Formula One, Rally, any other kind of circuits that you kind of see circulating around and things that I've always wanted to be a part of. I've always wanted to be a part of a racing team of, of some kind anywhere in motorsports. I love all of motorsports. It feels like drifting is one that I could just snap right into right away. You sure about that? You sure about that? You sure about that? There's just the barrier of entry, the barriers on the track, the barriers in and around the track that it, every Z that I saw seemed just attracted to. They just absolutely had to hit the dirt pit. No matter how well they did around any of the corners, no matter how slow or fast they sent it, they just had to send it right into the dirt. Also enveloping yourself in the culture, just like any other sport, you gotta get committed to doing this. Just like baseball practice, you gotta be there every day or every opportunity. Every time the field's open, you gotta be there. So just like that on the track, you gotta be there every did and darn day that it's open. Doesn't cost a lot to do. Speaking of the culture, does not cost a lot. It seems like from uh, this speedway that is relatively close to me, I would say between from where I am and from most people in Southern California, it's anywhere between an hour to an hour and a half, maybe two hours if you're a little further away, Los Angeles, which there are other tracks over there in Los Angeles, which is again, a little bit further away from us. So now we covered that you wanna get in the culture. It's not far away. It doesn't cost very much. I think like $100 per event, maybe a little bit more on some other ones, but you're telling me you can't save $100. You can't save $20 a day not going to Chipotle. You can't save a couple bucks not going to Starbucks just to send your car on the track to spend another $500 or $1,200 on tires. You're telling me you can't do that? Yeah, you can. Talked about the barriers there. Pretty much the ability to learn, to get on that track, to make the sacrifice, you know, obviously ding, dent, damage, rebuild, reuse, recycle your differential because you're going to, you're gonna buy another one, especially if you have an open diff on any of your cars, which brings me to the last barrier of entry, which is gonna cost you the most in the beginning. The long run's gonna cost you the money, obviously with any motorsport, with any sport, with anything. You could pick up golf today, tea time isn't free. You could pick up whatever it is. It's probably a lot easier than picking up a $2 million Ferrari F1 car, so, I mean, but that's just me. Barrier of entry can be a pretty steep requirement, but you can keep it pretty minimal. I kind of want to go through the range of what you could get on a McDonald's salary all the way to what you could get on, all the way to if you invested Dogecoin to when it was less than a penny and sold when it was just under a dollar. Oh my God! Wow! A really substandard car that I think a lot of people overlook that I saw one of at the track that'll get you in the game for relatively cheap. I'd say anywhere between 3,000 all the way up to 10,000 would be an IS300. It comes with a non turbo similar engine of the 1JZ. The only problem with this vehicle would be scarcity of a manual transmission. So it could be anywhere from about three to 10 racks, just getting you started through the door, not because of the car, but because of things that would need to be done. Welded diff, manual transmission, possible turbo, you know, tire suspension, all that good stuff, uh, which will kind of be included in the range of prices that I'm gonna talk about per vehicle. So if I say 10, 20, 30,000, just, Think about the fact that it's like, you're gonna need wheels, tires, diff, turbo, engine swap possible, because some of these vehicles, they have the body, they have the style, they have the rear wheel drive, they just don't have the power in some cases. And don't worry, if you don't like Toyota, a lot of the cars are Toyota and Nissan. So just, if you, if you don't like Toyota and Nissan, I don't know, you're gonna be, I don't know, drifting American, I guess, but we'll get to that. Another one, Lexus 
SC400, same budget, 1JZ, rear wheel drive, uh, same budget in the price range, five to 10,000 because transmission, differential, wheel size, you guys get it. Now I am saying five to $10,000 range, but you can subsidize that by really going beat up, beat down, missing bumpers, missing fenders. You can really dumb down this cost so you can really pump it up and with that extra few grand you got saved with turbo eBay you know, camber arms, all that good stuff, uh, which is what you kind of want to do, which I, what I noticed is that people didn't give a crap how their car looked unless they were actually good enough to keep it intact, but they didn't care about how that vehicle looked because at the end of the day, they were going to be spending money on keeping it on the track, not just getting the car on there or buying the car in the first place. I saw an LS400 there, and that's an example of a vehicle you could get for about 500 to a thousand dollars i have seen but if it's gonna run if it's gonna work you still need that 10 racks saved or you've seen that 10 racks in the in the wings because you're gonna pay way way less for the car but you're gonna have so much more to put exactly what you want in it and to get it exactly in running condition of what you need if you want to chuck a few extra thousand on it just to get a little bit more modern vehicle something that's a little bit newer you want a kind of a plush interior when you're over here you know dipping sideways crashing into people you try to take in tandem drift with um if that's something you really care about or you know i guess bucket seats you don't have to pay for uh, you're gonna go with 350 or 370z something with way more kick way more horsepower with some of the other ones i talked about you might have to buy a manual transmission you might have to buy a turbo you might have to buy this you know specking it up because of the fact that it wasn't ever built to push power push the rear end out the 350 370z have enough pull have enough push to get it sideways and nine times out of ten they come in manual um, and especially if you don't care about having a soft top you could undercut this budget by a lot i'd say 10 to 20 g's just to get in the door or just to get enough parts on it to swing it with accuracy with some intention with some confidence from my experience of the, just the one day i was there it seemed like z's were the middle range of what people were looking into getting z's were the people who like i've been doing this for a little bit but i've not quite gotten there but i'm trying i'm working on it i'm getting better i'm hitting the dirt i'm spinning out but i'm working but if that's a little too rich for your taste if you're not afraid of rust you're not afraid of no clear coat you're not afraid of no front end you're not afraid of no tail lights and you're not afraid of buying a coil pack as soon as you buy the vehicle then you go in and get a g37 g35 same motor same build same weight different styling but for some reason costs less probably because a lot of them actually are used in not drift but are used in what all of us car enthusiasts hate which is takeovers despite if you get a z or you get a g or you get an m which is a thing infinity m45 kevin look it up i'm i know it's a thing m50 or m45 infinity it's it's the worst despite the fact that i'd actually be a big advocate for starting off with a vehicle like this because i feel like this is what i would want to start off with i'd want to save about 20 racks buy a 350 that's just old and tired and the, but they just run strong don't care what's missing off i don't care if the doors are off i don't care if there's a soft top because it's going to cost you a lot less than a lot of other cars that are higher on this list ones that i saw at that day that you know were just killing it on the track but anticipate saving a little bit more for a coil pack because you'll need it a head gasket because you'll need it a lot of oil because you'll need it and better wheels because you'll need it now kind of still 10 grand to about 20 i'd say even so much as 30 but any 240sx i'm not going to say too much about this because absolutely every single person in the comments is going to be like it's overrated it's overpriced it's overhyped it's too much most of them don't work i hate it here stop posting these videos that's what most of the people are going to be saying in the comments but most of those people are actually the ones that love the 240 the most they love the s13 they love the s14 they love a sylvia import they love these cars but the problem is that they recognize that the market has a lot of flaws when it comes to these vehicles because we just bought them in bulk or not we but people who had money in the last couple years or in the late 2010s they had money they bought the cars they instilled a lot of nostalgia a lot of hype in the vehicle so now they're at such a high cost of entry that for a lot of people unless you're looking for it because of the 50 50 weight distribution because of the sr20 turbo because of swapping an rb26 because of being able to perform an ls swap because of all these advantages of that chassis of that vehicle that they're just not looking for it i love a 240 and if i was two tax brackets above where i am now i'd be looking to get one heck if i was monetized i'd be looking to get one the amount of aftermarket support the 50 50 split just adds to it overall being just a really nice car to own zokai kits come on guys from here on let's say we're hitting the 30,000 and 
to outer space mark from here on. This is not in my space and not definitely where I'm looking to get them, but hey, maybe you're somebody who's just like, I am looking for somewhere to throw $50,000 into and I don't care what happens. You just wanna get into it because you're bored. You wanna get into it because golf sounds boring, so you'd rather do drifting. So that's gonna be your E30 M3s, that's gonna be your 325Is, your 335Is pre-2012. Pretty much all, all and every single BMW that comes in a manual transmission, and because they're all rear wheel drive, obviously not an X drive because that's X drive, that's four wheel drive, don't do that. You're gonna search for any of these tonight. You're gonna say, hey, but, but Mookie here, I can get these for literally like three grand, 2,500 if I'm lucky for a 325i. I can get a 325i 2002 for like two grand. Manual transmission, it works. Yeah, but guess what? As soon as you park it, all the oil is gonna be gone. So I'm accounting for three, 30 to 35,000 just to keep you on the road for long enough to make it to the track day. NK5 Supra is obviously a really good choice if you like drawing attention to yourself like I do and you just want a BMW with extra steps. Um, a couple notable and honorable mentions, Drift Spec 2, Drift Spec S2K, which is gonna run you about 33,000. I guarantee it, trust me, I know how it does. 33,000, save that much, that's what, you, that's what you're gonna be. If you could even find one for under 22,000 aftermarket. But anyways, honorable mention, Drift S2K. Any EcoBoost Mustang, honestly, not too many, not too much in parts, not too much on the market. 5.0 Mustang, you wanna spend a little bit more, you really wanna send it at 80 miles per hour coming to the turn. Any imported Toyota Chaser, four-door four Skyline, GTR, R32, things like that. Any import JDM rear-wheel drive vehicle, obviously you're gonna do well because more than likely it comes packed with enough power or the support to get it on the track, but you're just not gonna have the support in aftermarket parts. But that's it for rattling off as many vehicles as possible that are uh, just lying in wait on Facebook Marketplace and offer up for you. You know what you guys think. Let me know what you would wanna get started if you wanna get started in drifting. If you want me to go ahead and send just the first thousand dollar car with the rear wheel drive that I can find. Um, so we could just post a video on here of me flying into the dirt, then flying out the windshield. Uh, more than happy to do that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one.